Morning, everyone. My name is uh, Charlotte DeCoster. I'm the Director of Education at the Dallas Holocaust and Human Rights Museum. And today, uh, this lecture is part of our weekly series, A Glimpse into the Museum. And first of all, I want to thank Bank of Texas for sponsoring this series and bringing this series to you weekly at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. Today, our talk will be about our Beyond Tolerance Theater and taking a little glimpse inside and learning a little bit more of what is all going on in our exhibitions Beyond Tolerance Theater and exploring the topic of unconscious bias that is discussed in that Beyond Tolerance Theater. I also want to give you a heads up that uh, next week, Glimpse into the Museum will be a look into the 10 stages of genocide gallery and a little bit closer look at one of our islands there on the persecution of the Karankawa Indian in Texas. So I hope you're able to join us for that as well. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick reminder that this is a webinar. So if you would like to ask questions and uh, have any statements or anything that you would discuss, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and I will see your questions come through. Uh, I do ask if you can make your questions as direct and short as possible. It makes it easier to process the questions and go through them as they are written out. Uh, you can find that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and through that you can ask those questions and please be free to ask them uh, as I'm presenting. I will see them come down on my Q&A screen as well and um, I will sometimes break and take the opportunity for uh, to answer those questions. So feel free to ask them as we go through. Okay, with that we are going to get started and uh, I wanted to uh, give a little introduction first of uh, how the Beyond Tolerance Theater is set within the museum. Uh, our museum has three large wings. Our exhibition has three large wings. Our Holocaust Shoah Wing, in which we narrate the, uh, the history of the Holocaust and Shoah. Uh, geographically, then the visitor moves forward into your human rights wing in which we address topics such as representational justice through the Nuremberg trials. Uh, we um, also address uh, the human rights declaration and the development of the modern day concept of human rights. And finally, we also have our 10 stages of genocide gallery in which we explain to the visitor the concept of the 10 stages and the process of genocide. Finally, our third wing is the Pivot to America wing, in which we bring this whole conversation locally down to us, to what this all means to us as Americans and as Texans, as our museum is located in Dallas, Texas. Part of this conversation is uh, the what we are, what ideals we are founded on as a nation, historical realities how they match with those American ideals. And then finally, the upstanders that drive the repair and that drive the change to work more towards those ideals. So a lot of what you can see, and this is actually an image of a view inside to that Pivot to America wing, where you can see some of the, the national upstanders like Daniel Inouye, uh, but also on the right-hand side, some of our Texas upstanders as well. Uh, a lot of this conversation is about human behavior and how uh, humans respond uh, to those realities and to that repair. And to continue that narrative, that is what our Beyond Tolerance Theater is really about, is, is that extension to what the fr historical framework that we have already laid in our exhibition. And in the back hand of uh, our gallery, you can see two double doors with the silver handles right there. That is our Beyond Tolerance Theater. This Beyond Tolerance Theater looks at the concept, uses to the concept of unconscious bias. And I'll talk and I'll explain a little bit what that is all about. This is an inter theater. And unfortunately today, that is something that I cannot virtually do with you. You have to come to the museum and experience this. So I do encourage you when we reopen after our temporary closure to come visit our museum and actually come take part in, uh, in the interactive theater. Even if you're very familiar with the concepts of bias and unconscious bias, it will still be a really important experience for you to go through. 
So if, um, you walk in, this is the timed experience, you walk in and it starts an interactive experience in which we pull your opinion, uh, we have you go through some activities, different things uh, for us to very interactively learn about that concept of unconscious bias. And uh, so I want to walk you kind of more conceptually through that today. What I, again, as I said, what I can't do, do is walk you interactively through that as you would through the museum. And I can talk about some of those concepts that are introduced in the Beyond Tolerance Theater. So before I want to get started, I do want to say one thing. I am not a specialist on unconscious bias or equity and diversity. Uh, what I am is I can give you the information that is presented in this theater. I can talk a little bit about these concepts and answer some of these questions. But um, I do want to uh, just start off the bat that um, I'm a historian by training and um, my, I am not a specialist in unconscious bias necessarily, but I can do introduce some of the basic concepts that introduced uh, here in this theater, which shows that this is a great way to start your introduction. And I will can point you at the end to some areas where you can explore more and learn more beyond what I share with you today about unconscious bias. So why have this theater, right? Why have this interactive experience in a history museum? First of all, as I said in my introduction, is because we also look at human behavior. A lot of it is upstander behavior, bystander behavior. And to learn more about that, and even the human rights that we look at, uh, we can open up that concept of thinking about bias and unconscious bias. And it's our hope as a museum to teach about bias so that we can create a real change in the way we think as human beings. Um, and speak and act toward one another. And that is part of that overall concept of working towards and inspiring upstanders. Uh, sorry, I'm getting the information that my screen is still black. I'm just checking in. Um, Spencer, is my screen still black? And we got unshare and share again. Sorry for the technical delay. Uh, is it up again? Okay, I'm, um, let me share again, sorry. Thank you for those participants helping me too, I appreciate that. Let me share my screen again. Okay, I think we fixed the issue. Yes, I uh, hope everybody's able to see now into the gallery. I apologize for that. Uh, okay, so uh, just a, a little recap from what I just said. So the, this is the Pivot to America Gallery in which our Beyond Tolerance Theater, and if you were previously not able to see it, right here in the back uh, side, uh, where you see the silver bars are the doors to our Beyond Tolerance Theater. What I was saying is the reason we have this Beyond Tolerance Theater in the exhibit is, is that it's our hope to teach the bias so that we can create real change in the way we think, speak, and act toward one another. And I think that the first step in that is, is that curation, right, is that we talk about in the museum, that first step on the journey towards change is awareness. And that's really what this uh, theater is about. Uh, we uh, don't expect people to come walk out of here and be experts in unconscious bias. We just want them to be aware and have what his unconscious bias is and kind of start to get the wheels turning on how this works. Okay. 
I hope my PowerPoint slides are going with me. So this is actually a look into the theater. And I actually used a graphic design image to kind of show how our, our theater is uh, structured because it's really hard to take a picture in there because it's dark and, and because it's interactive uh, images don't always come uh, through clear so but each individual if you would normally walk into the uh, theater has an individual tablet and uh, and then there's a major projection on the screen where we have that conversation and introduce um, uh, Sorry, I, um, for some reason, my PowerPoint is not going with me. I'm gonna close it out for one second and come back. I so apologize about the technical difficulties. Spencer, are we on the correct slide now? Okay. So um, this gives you a view inside the uh, theater and shows you how the interactivity works a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is again, uh, go over those highlight points um, and introduce what the, uh, uh, activity would introduce as major concepts to you, but do be aware if you would be at the museum, you would see like you would see on the bottom picture right here, you would be asked questions on these tablets and you would be pulled about uh, if you under if you know about unconscious bias, are you aware of it? And um, do you know the definitions of some of these uh, concepts that I will talk about today? So I just want to give a little bit of a glimpse into that, how the system works, uh, if you would actually come be at the museum. And now I'm going to switch to uh, the general topics. So unconscious bias, uh, that is what this theater is all about. And that is a big term. We have a lot of students come through our museum and uh, a lot of the adult visitors know maybe other terms instead of unconscious bias. They might know the word implicit bias or cognitive bias. And that is really the same as unconscious bias. We at the museum use the term unconscious bias because implicit and cognitive bias is really the concept that, are, that we make connections unconsciously, that we make decisions unconsciously, that color our view, that color how we uh, view things, how we act, how we do, uh, and it's that's what unconscious bias is all about, is those unconscious decisions, and that is the same term, as I said, as implicit bias. So that's what we're going to be talking about in general, and I will give you some examples of unconscious bias. Just as a reference point, I do want to start by saying that um, unconscious bias is not the same thing as prejudice, discrimination, and hatred. Uh, oftentimes, uh, prejudice, discrimination, and hate, hatred are more forms and examples of explicit bias, meaning you are aware that you are being hateful, that you are being prejudiced, or that you're being discriminatory. They are intentional. When we're talking about unconscious bias, Usually these are, uh, the unconscious bias is unintentional and we are not aware a lot of times that we are making these decisions. Unconscious bias uh, does play parts in prejudice, discrimination, and hatred. And that's why it's important to become aware that uh, we do have unconscious bias. So how does unconscious bias work? First of all, all decisions that we make, and we make thousands of decisions every day, right? Nonstop, uh, our brain is pulling and making uh, these decisions. They're influenced by, yep, unconscious bias, right? You might have already figured that out. Uh, our unconscious minds use shortcuts to help us process tons of information through filters of our family background, our experiences, our culture, 
So basically our brain is like a database and it is continuously pulling some information that has been stored in there. And that is different from everybody, right? Person X has, has had a fully different life experience and uh, educational experience and family background and cultural background than person Y. So person X is gonna pull and make decisions uh, based on their experiences and person Y is going to do that based on uh, their experience. And that is how unconsciously we are pulling from that database. And oftentimes we are not aware that we are pulling from those experiences. So we see the world through a limited perspective and we make instantaneous decisions. Two people can have the exact same scenario, right? and can make different decisions uh, and conclusions because of their unconscious bias. So they can see, for example, the exact same painting or the exact same scenario happen, but their brain is pulling and making these unconscious decisions based upon their experiences. For example, and, and I'm, I'm using kind of a broad example here, a dog, um, you are walking in the park and you see a cute dog walking by. I have a dog at home. I'm a dog person. I grew up with dogs. I'm very comfortable. I love dogs. Uh, and the dog comes to me and I openly say, oh, this is a cute dog. I want a pet. The person next to me never grew up with dogs, has very limited experience with dogs, and actually at one point got bitten by a dog. So their unconscious bias is automatically going to trigger them to say, oh, be careful, don't touch the dog, where my unconscious bias might make me give the decision to pet the dog and cuddle it and see it as a friendly dog, whereas the person who has little experience, life experience with a dog and maybe has been bitten, uh, might more see the dog as something dangerous and be scared of it. So this is a scenario where two people people have very different experiences, background when it comes to dogs, and that limits their experience and they see it from their perspective. It is very important when we think about unconscious bias that there are three important things to remember. Unconscious bias happens lightning fast. We are, it is quickly happening. We are unconsciously making these decisions. We all do it. It's how we work as human beings. We are all continuously uh, having those lightning fast decisions happening. And most of the time we don't even know that it is happening. So those are three big points to remember about unconscious bias. It's lightning fast, we all do it, and we don't even know that it's happening. So today, and I hope this is showing on my slides right now, we are gonna cover three different types of unconscious bias. Confirmation bias, frequency bias, and blind spot bias. Each one of these examples is also covered in our Beyond Tolerance Theater, and you would go through the interactive experience learning more about these key concepts of confirmation bias, frequency bias, and blind spot bias. And remember, all of these three are examples of unconscious bias. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is putting greater value on information that supports my beliefs and dismissing facts that contradict them. So basically, uh, it is if, uh, if something is happening that I already believe in, that information that I already agree with, I will easily unconsciously make the decision to uh, agree with it again. But if it goes against something, that um, uh, I, I don't have that information or I don't support those beliefs, it is, I will usually dismiss them. I will unconsciously dismiss that this is true. So let me give a little bit of an example. Let's say, and this is just a generic example, right? Let's say I, you know, as a fictitious person, think boys and men are better at math than women and girls. I attend a science fair where strong math and science skills are required to win. I am introduced to a young woman who wins for her robotic dog with artificial intelligence features. But I dismiss 
her victory, her win, thinking she must have won because the dog was cute, not because she created an immense and great science project, right, which contradicts my beliefs. I just dismissed that she won because what she created was cute, and the dog just thought that was cute and let her win. So in this case, I found an excuse to dismiss an example of a young woman excelling at science and math because it challenges my beliefs, my prejudice, and under confirmation bias, I am more willing to accept beliefs that confirm my beliefs, facts that confirm my beliefs. And this is the first example of how unconscious bias works, is through confirmation bias. And let me know if you have any questions about that. The second form that we address in the theater is frequency bias. Frequency bias is judging information as true because a re repeated exposure to it, meaning that when we hear something over and over again, it becomes a fact to us even though it might not be a fact. It is confirmed and it becomes a belief and it becomes true to us. For example, an uber famous person with lots of social media followers decides that young people are lazy. This famous person starts tweeting about the laziness of young people, nonstop, out, out, putting it out there on social media. Maybe it's not just tweeting, it's putting it on Facebook too. And it's being shared everywhere, right? So I'm seeing it pop up on my social media in different places. While on talk shows, uh, another celebrity throws out the same statement that young people are lazy and I'm watching that TV show. So I've now seen it on social media. Now I'm also seeing it on a TV. Another celebrity or two also picks up the idea that young people are lazy and they too keep repeating this notion. Maybe I'm reading it in a magazine somewhere or in a newspaper. Now I follow this important blog and this blogger calls onto a national education program to turn around the laziness of young people and work on that and on and on and on. And I'm getting this information and for a long period of time, it is repeated enough that young people are lazy that I believe that young people are lazy, even though I might not have experience with it. Operating with a frequency bias, I accept the information as true because I hear it repeated often. Uh, and so this is another example of that repetitive nature. I do have to say, when we have student groups come through the museum, frequency bias is something that really triggers them and that makes them think about this because they are confronted with so many sources of information that comes to them and it makes them think, am I hearing this so often that I think it is true or do I really know it is true? Have I researched this? Uh, so this is um, uh, available uh, as well. Uh, for you to look at. And Karen just asked, uh, will this program be available online later so I know whether to keep uh, taking screenshots and notes? Uh, the program will uh, be, uh, in a few weeks, will be posted on our website, uh, on our YouTube page as well, uh, many of our programs. Uh, but in the meanwhile, you are either welcome to take those screenshots as well um, if you want to, or just wait until the video comes out. Blind spot bias. And remember, Karen, too, uh, before I get into blind spot bias, I will give you some sources as well where you can explore a little bit more about this as well that are connected to the museum. Blind spot bias. That is our third form of uh, unconscious bias. Blind spot bias is putting greater value on your own ability to be more objective than other people. The overestimation of one's own abilities to be objective, be an objective thinker creates blind spots in judgments and decision making. So let's say I believe I'm an objective person and an open minded person because I know how it feels to be discriminated against. For example, I've been an I've, um, immigrant to the United States. And when I came to the United States and I newly came here, I had difficulty speaking the language. English was foreign to me. Uh, and people uh, 
uh, acted strange about that because they saw me as a foreign speaker and they behaved differently around me. Uh, they also called me un-American and uh, saw me as a stranger and treated me as a stranger. So I know what it feels like when people are um, treat me different because I'm an immigrant. So I've experienced that myself, right? So here's how blind spot bias supports um, my belief. A new friend points out that what I just said in conversation with her was biased against a gay person. I declare that I'm not biased because I know what discrimination feels like from my own experience, right? As an immigrant, I understand what it is feels like to be biased. I explained that I'm an immigrant to my friend to the US and that I've experienced some form of discrimination before. Some people made fun of my accent and told me that I'm not a real American. It's some to be treated as different, so I'm careful to be objective and open-minded towards all people. Basically operating with my blind spot, I am blinded to the biases I just had. I cannot see my own bias. Uh, so this is another unconscious form of bias, is this blind spot bias, is because you, you feel like you have been biased against, or uh, you cannot objectively judge your, uh, your abilities to be objective, you don't see that you are um, blinded to giving certain judgment. And I hope this makes sense. Let me know if anything doesn't make sense and you have a question, you can put it in the Q&A. As we are an educational institution uh, and a history museum, uh, we also wanted to give the visitor, after they've gone through the whole experience, some key points on uh, to becoming more aware and to understanding and where to start repairing our unconscious bias. Because the reality is uh, we all have confirmation bias, frequency bias, and blind spot bias. And there are ways that we can start um, using different steps to repair unconscious bias. First, we can avoid stereotypes and overgeneralizations. And think about when stereotypes are being made and overgeneralizations and how your unconscious bias might be coloring that. Dig for facts. Uh, especially in cases like stere uh, frequency bias, right? Is that information that is over and over and over and is coloring your unconscious bias and your opinions, is that truly fact? So dig for facts. Separate facts from feelings, right? Um, your unconscious bias is influencing you. So sometimes you need to go out and about and separate those facts from the feelings. Search out and listen to a diverse range of experiences uh, uh, and, and, and listen to them. People with different opinions from you. Uh, go out and explore, put yourself in, in situations that are different from what you are used to. So you can start learning and fill your database, right? With different experiences that do not color your single view or might not limit your view, is broaden that view in a sense that, so that your database expands. Engage in self-reflection and uncover uh, uh, personal bias. I think this is a difficult one, and, but this is really important is to start that self-reflection. And that is the first step, right? Is, is recognizing that we have unconscious biases and to start self-reflecting is in which ones might be influencing my decisions. Keep learning about bias and the way that it might influence you. That is the biggest step I've been taking because honestly, uh, when I started working at the museum, I knew very little about unconscious bias myself, and I've been continuously learning, going through different trainings, getting the opportunity to learn a little bit more about unconscious bias. And as I said in the beginning, I am not a specialist on unconscious bias yet, but it has opened my own thinking up to think about different things and to explore these concepts of unconscious bias, but also explicit bias as well is the intentional biases. Uh, uh, Madan, uh, Madan, I hope I'm pronouncing your um, name correctly, asked, uh, said that uh, 
uh, she understands um, blind spot bias, but how is it different from confirmation bias? So blind spot bias is when you when you can't really be objective because uh, you see yourself uh, almost in the same shoes and you can't be objective at that point. Confirmation bias can be directed to many different things is that you have a view about a certain thing, an object, a topic, and that you won't, uh, that you are have a difficulty changing your mind because that is how, already how, how your view is. So it doesn't need to necessarily be, you know, um, connected personally to you. With blind spot bias, obviously, it, usually it's because you've gone through a similar experience. And so it makes it hard to be objective. And you think in, in blind spot bias, a lot of times you think you are objective because you've gone through a similar experience. Does that make sense? I know all of these topics are very difficult. Um, and, and, and this is why I encourage you to go out there and explore and learn more about it. Uh, because this is just a tiny little taste. This is just a little introduction um, that we do here. And it helps you kind of uh, process that, that first step, and then move forward uh, uh, towards that. Okay, the what another part that our uh, Beyond Tolerance Theater does is besides just introducing the concept of unconscious bias and the examples of frequency bias, confirmation, and blind spot bias, is actually going through an interactive activity on gender bias to kind of give an example. And uh, it uses a system of um, jobs, different jobs, uh, and you are asked to place people in different employment categories according to gender, and the colors change as well, which actually, uh, when the colors and the employment uh, roles change, it actually takes our, our brain a little uh, longer to process the combination of the colors that we associate with gender and the employment roles that we uh, associate with gender. Uh, this is not something that uh, our museum just poof came up with. Uh, there's been many studies done on that. Probably the most famous one is uh, the ha Harvard, I apologize, the Harvard University Implicit Bias Study. And they have a series of similar activities that you can do online. So while I cannot uh, share our Beyond Tolerance Theater today, I did want to direct you to, and you can see the link right here, these implicit bias uh, studies. And in a sense, our theater does a very similar um, experience to that, that you can do in many different ways um, for uh, the uh, online, uh, for the implicit bias as well. And it allows you basically to take a test to kind of have you think about your unconscious or implicit bias. So I'm just gonna click and I'm hoping that this is gonna pop up. Um, so this takes you, that link takes you to um, the study and you just need to wish, uh, read the statement, all the disclaimers, what this is part of, uh, and then wish to proceed and it gives you uh, different examples of that. And I actually um, have one pulled up, I actually pulled up the implicit bias uh, test from the Harvard study on um, um, disabilities and to see if you have implicit bias on uh, persons with disabilities. Um, and so you, what you can see here is basically on the keyboard, uh, it will ask you to categorize um, people using your letter E and your letter I. Uh, and you can see uh, the categories here and there are seven parts and the instructions change to each part. What it does is it, as the instructions change, it will take your brain a little longer to process some of the concepts that you do and it ties it and based on that it gives you your evaluation back. So I'm just going to show you really quick um, how this works. So I'm going to press the space bar and now basically using E and I, I can either, if I would press E if I would see this uh, symbol right here as an abled person or as a, I would press I if it was a disabled person. So I'm just going to press E, I'm going to press I, I'm going to press E, 
I'm gonna press I, and so on. Now over time, different images will get shown to me, colors will change, they will switch the system up, so that you have to kind of process this harder, the process gets harder and harder and harder. Um, and um, in a sense, it is kind of messing with your unconscious bias, uh, and depending on how fast that are, it just shows how your unconscious bias is working and it will give you the results. So they have different uh, implicit bias tests on different backgrounds like gender and religion and different things that you're going to explore as well. On that website, it also has some education materials more on um, the Harvard study itself and on implicit bias if you want to learn a little bit more. Um, and it gives you all of those uh, different details. So um, uh, that is a way that uh, now at home, you can kind of go out and explore. Normally at the end of our experience, you would um, get on your little tablet that you would be in the Beyond Tolerance Theater, uh, a few websites where you could go explore more. And this um, Harvard study is one of the links that you could go explore more. Uh, that we suggest in our Beyond Tolerance Theater as well. So this is kind of the um, general overview of what we discuss and the kind of little taste of what unconscious bias is about and some examples of unconscious bias. Does anybody have any questions that I could answer about the theater or I'll do my best on unconscious bias? And again, you can put your questions um, in um, the database, uh, sorry, uh, on the bottom in the Q&A as well. So somebody asks, how do students react to this interactive theater? It is actually really interesting. Uh, students have reacted very positively about it. A lot of times this has not been introduced to them at school yet, or it's been introduced in, uh, and they, you know, in the classroom environment, they have all kinds of other stuff going on too, and they're learning about different subjects and they've not really kind of processed it. And then when it comes to the museum, and kind of see it in a very friendly way again, uh, it really makes them think uh, of what and more process about um, uh, what unconscious bias really is. And it, it really opens up. It is really, they're very enthusiastic about this too, probably because it's interactive as well. And so it's a very friendly way to introduce this topic to them. And so they're very open to accepting it. And we hear a lot of times feedback from teachers that will come tell me, wow, the students have really not thought about it. And now that we're back in the classroom, these are some things that they wanna explore more. So that's been a very great to hear is that we are getting feedback from some teachers. It is interesting also that we are not getting only that feedback from teachers, from students, but from teachers as well. We've had quite a few teachers who said, wow, I really never explored teaching about unconscious bias, or I didn't really understand it myself. And this is a very student friendly way, very public, you know, easy way to start introducing some level, lower level concepts of unconscious bias. I think to a lot of people, having the discussion about unconscious bias um, seems very complex, seems very difficult, um, and um, they don't want to deep dive into it yet. And this, the Beyond Tolerance Theater, makes it much easier for students, for the younger public, for the public in general, and for teachers to start entering on that and just becoming aware, taking that first step. Uh, so I think that has been made it so popular. And so we do get a lot of requests with that. We also have a classroom program that ties with this that um, teachers can book uh, to complement our Beyond Tolerance Theater. And that program has actually been really popular. So we've had a few school groups go through the, uh, we call it confronting um, bias program as well um, after they do the Beyond Tolerance Theater. Uh, uh, Teresita, I hope, uh, Ms. Ramos, I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, asked, can visitors use Wi-Fi to do the implicit bias test on their phones? 
So they cannot do the beyond tolerance theater, but you can do the Harvard studies test. You can do dose on your phones as well. You actually don't use a keyboard. Uh, you do, you actually tap it and press it if you do it on a mobile device, an iPad, a tablet, uh, iPhone, Android. Uh, if you do it on a mobile device, you can just click and tap it. So you can still do, go to that link and I can pull that link up again. So go to that link. And if you want to take a sh screenshot of that, the link right now, uh, you can go to that link and do it on your phone as well. You just wouldn't use the keyboard E and I, you just literally tap. And it has the same results. Um, making sure I'm going. Uh, Brooke Wilson has how have students reflected on their own biases? Uh, that is something that we're still working on is, is in, in the long run, right, is how are they reflecting on their own biases. The students that we have worked with in the classroom are really shocked that uh, we do on top of this a visual thinking strategy with them and they're oftentimes really shocked they didn't realize that maybe some of their classmates could see the same scene. So in the, in the classroom program we use kind of a very abstract painting uh, and we show that to them and we ask them what they see in this painting and we do a visual thinking strategy with them. If you're familiar with um, art analysis and um, uh, some equity diversity training uses that frequently too. So we use that image and we have them uh, tell us what they see in that image. And usually every student sees something totally right unconsciously. They're seeing something different in that because it's colored by their experiences. And so, especially when they pair it with that activity, uh, when we ask them, you know, what did you think about this now? They're really, you know, a lot of the first reactions are is like, wow, I didn't realize that, um, that we could all see, look at the same thing and see something so different. Uh, so that has been, it, you know, awareness. Awareness has been the biggest reflection that we are seeing uh, with students. Um, Jane, um, uh, Jane uh, Schuler, I hope, um, uh, feel free to reach out um, uh, to the museum. Uh, my email is C DeCoster, like my last name, at dhhrm.org if you want to shoot me an email. Um, uh, and we can, uh, we do do our confronting bias program and for professional groups as well. So uh, Jane asked if we would if we do similar programs for adults as well, and we do do sometimes a confronting bias with law enforcement groups or legal professionals as well. So uh, just reach out to us. Um, has there been research into connecting and detailing how these biases went into the Holocaust? That is a great question, Celeste. I don't know. Um, that is probably a field in psychology. Uh, I can probably do some research in that. So again, if you want to email me, I can maybe see if I can connect you with somebody else. Uh, but I don't know if the, the psychological field of um, unconscious bias, implicit bias, explicit bias, if um, there is a study that has uh, maybe looked at Holocaust history with that. So I'm sorry, I won't, I'm not able to answer that directly. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, uh, next week, uh, we will delve into a topic that um, is I, historically, I think, such an interesting topic. I'm not originally from Texas, but I'm one of those people that came here as quickly as possible, as they always say in Texas. And um, I've learned so much about Texas history since then. And one of the things is uh, with the opening of the new museum is learning about the 10 stages of genocide. I've learned so much with that. And one of the islands on there is the persecution of the Karankawa Indians uh, and the Karankawas in Texas. So um, if uh, you don't know a lot about Texas history uh, or the persecution of the Karankawa Indians or you know nothing about the Karankawa Indians and you're learning this word for the first time, please join us next week uh, to explore that topic as well. I know it's very different from what we did today. Uh, and that just shows the diversity of what our museum offers. So remember all of the topics that we do in the glimpse into the museum are all different parts that our museum talks about. Uh, so once we reopen, come visit the Beyond Tolerance Theaters and come visit our galleries so you can continue this learning. This is just skimming the surface of it. 
So thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful day and we hope to see you next week. And a big thank you again to Bank of Texas for sponsoring our Glimpse into the Museum series.